Hello guys, this is my submission for the Australian Delphi User Group Autumn Symposium 2013. I'm here to show you how we can use Delphi to go beyond Delphi. My name is Victor Fernandez. I'm a senior Delphi developer working with Delphi since 1998 and I'm also Embarcadero MVP in Brazil. I'm an electrical engineer, CTO at TKS Software and I also teach microcontrollers at the university. Well, when I say I want to use Delphi to go beyond Delphi, I mean I want to use Delphi to go beyond database access and user interfaces. I want to use Delphi to develop an iOS application to run inside my iPhone and with an on-off button I want to light up this lamp through Ethernet. This is something we don't use Delphi every day. This is Delphi applied to do industrial and home automation. And how is this possible? We are going to use Delphi XC2 to develop iOS applications running inside iPhone or iPads and through wireless network we are going to access a DataSnap server that receives messages and sends it directly to the Arduino boards using UDP protocol. The Arduino boards is the one responsible to light up this lamp using a relay. And what are Arduino boards anyway? Arduino boards are open source electronics platforms that makes it very easy to access hardware. We can use Arduino boards to read inputs, sensors for example, and then we can also use it to write outputs and control actuators. In this example, we are using an Arduino board to control this lamp. So, Let's put some hands-on Delphi code and see how it goes. So, uh, let's start by developing our DataSnap server plus UDP client. Let's not forget that this application is running between our Delphi X2 iOS application and our Arduino board. So, let's do it. What I have here is a Mac computer running a virtual machine with Windows XP on it and I will open Delphi XE2, clicking File, New, Other, select the DataSnap server option and then DataSnap REST application and click OK. Our application is going to be a standalone VCL application, so click Next and I'm going to run this server on port 1401 don't worry about this port, you can use other numbers I'm using this one specifically because I have some port mappings on so I will test the port and it's available and now I'm going to click next uh, for the server features make sure the sample methods and sample web files are checked and let's click in mobile connectors and server module options so click next and for the server methods and accessory class we are going to use the T data model kind so select the option and click next don't worry about the project location just click finish so this is the main form of our application and if we take some time we will see that some units have been automatically created uh, we will pay special attention to the attention to the server methods units and uh, we have here some automatically created methods. We have a echo string method that receives a parameter value of the string type and returns this value as a string to the one who called the method. Basically, uh, this method can be called from the iPhone application. And what we're going to do is to pass this parameter to the Arduino. So we are going to do this using UDP and I'm going to use a Indy UDP client and I'm going to configure this Indy UDP client to connect to my Arduino board running on the IP 192.168.0.177 this is the IP address I configured on my Arduino board and the Arduino board UDP server is running on port 8888 okay 
and what I want to do now is to make sure that this form connects the UDP client whenever it's created. So uh, in the UDP client one dot active equals true. And when the form is closed, I want to close the connection. So in the UDP client one dot active equals false. Now we are going back to the seven methods unit and I'm going to call the Indy client. Uh, it's on form one and it's not recognized of course because I have to do some uses clause here. Uh, file use unit use the form one unit this is where the Indy client is located now it's okay and then I can call the Indy client and I will use the send method to send the value parameter received in the echo string function so whenever the iPhone calls this function it will send a parameter saying turn the lamp on and I will just forward this message to the Arduino board using UDP protocol and whenever I click the off button in the iPhone it will send a parameter saying turn the lamp off and I will again forward the message to the Arduino board using UDP protocol. So I can now save my project. I'll save it to uh, a new folder here called Australia Delft User Group 2013. Uh, we'll create another file here data snap server. Okay, and I will save the project here. And I will run the project. So the form is initiated and it, it is already connected to the Arduino board. Uh, for the datasnap server start running and start receiving commands from the iPhone, I have to click in the start button and unblock my application. So, everything is set to receive commands from the iPhone now. Okay, now let's see a little bit on how we can develop our Delph XZ2 iOS application. So, uh, going back to Delphi, uh, I don't have much time now, so I'm going to open a project that I have already developed here. It has an on and off button. And on the on button, I have just programmed here a connection to my REST server that is going to be running on my computer on this IP address so I can check the IP address here in my MacBook it says here in the network option you see here 192.168.0146 and my iOS application is going to connect to this server on the port 1401 that I have configured earlier and it's going to send to call the echo string method sending the letter 8 that stands for high logic level to turn the lamp on and if we check the off button I have the same commands here calling the same echo string method but now sending the letter L which stands for low logic level and this is going to turn off the lamp so uh, I can just save the project uh, I will build the project no errors and now I will click on DPR to Xcode this is going to export my project to Xcode and now I can go back to my Mac and launch my Xcode application select my application here open it 
and I have to put my bundle identifier. I'm not going to enter in details about this now because we don't have the time for it. So uh, I have just selected my bundle identifier. I selected here my iPhone application. Here I'm not running it on an iPad or iPhone simulator. I, this is my iPhone connected to my computer and I'm going to run it. And when I do, it's going to be compiled and now I can see in my iPhone. Let's see if I can turn on my webcam here. Where can I see it? Uh, FaceTime. So uh, now you can see my iPhone with an on off button. Okay, so this is it. Okay, I only have five minutes to do this demonstration video, so I showed you guys how we developed the .NET REST server and showed a bit on how to call it from a Delphi iOS application. I'm not going to go into details on how we are going to program our Arduino board now, but I can say it's quite easy. We are going to use the example that comes in the Arduino installation files and we are just adding four lines of code. By now, I'm just going to run our server and I will click the start button so the application can respond to the echo method calls. And I'm now unlocking my iPhone and running my application. I'm not sure if you can see here, I have an on off button and I'm just going to click the on button and the light goes on. I'm clicking the off button and the light goes off, on and off and on. That's what I call using Delphi to go beyond Delphi. Thank you guys. Hope to see you in Australia next year.